Hey there, welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well. The strength of our self-confidence influences how we feel about ourselves, how we behave, and how others perceive us. The ability to establish a strong self-confidence and a feeling of being at peace with oneself, and also the ability to re-establish this feeling whenever it is shaken up, is a key part of self-leadership, and I'd like to give you five strategies that you can use to do this. Am I competent? Am I worthy? Will I do this well? The answers we give to these questions depends on the state of our self-confidence. We can also see how self-confident we are by observing how we react whenever we get critical feedback or whenever we make a mistake or have a bad performance. How easy is it for us to re-establish our self-confidence in these situations? There are some things we can do to strengthen and grow our self-confidence. Let's look at what those are. Exercise number one, be specific when you think about yourself. Refrain from generalized evaluations of yourself. When looking at this basket of fruit, is it good or bad? We can't really say, because we would have to look at each single fruit to determine the state of each fruit. And just like we can't have a generalized evaluation of this basket of fruits, we can't have a generalized evaluation of ourselves. Just like this basket of fruits is made up of different kinds of fruits that are in different states of being ripe, we as people have strengths and weaknesses. So when you think about yourself, practice being specific. No one is just a loser in every respect. We all have strengths and weaknesses. And when thinking about ourselves, it's important to make that distinction. To not go home feeling, oh, I'm a loser, I'm a reject, but to ask yourself, wait a minute, what specifically do I want to work on and what are some strengths that are still there even though I may have made a mistake? Otherwise, we will unnecessarily make ourselves feel low and bad about ourselves and dampen our self-confidence. For example, let's say you gave a presentation that wasn't well received. That doesn't mean that you are now an unworthy professional in your area, but that just means that you gave one presentation that wasn't well received. And even there we could go into the details and see what about the presentation wasn't well received. It probably wasn't the whole presentation. And then you can find that one thing you want to work on and be at peace with yourself as a whole. Exercise number two. Practice feeling good about yourself without needing to feel superior to someone else. We often build our self-confidence by comparing ourselves to others and then wanting to be better than them. And comparing has never been easier than today. We have so much information about so many other people at hand very easily. And we should always remember that what others are showing on their social media is only a small portion of their life. And your worth does not depend on what someone else is doing or not doing, and certainly not on being superior to anyone. You may not be as accomplished as someone else in a certain area, but maybe that person just had time to practice more or more tutoring, who knows? Ultimately, you will not grow from comparing yourself to others, and it also won't help you build your self-confidence. So practice being okay with yourself and feeling good about yourself without needing to be superior to someone else. Exercise number three, practice trusting your own judgment. Practice feeling good about your choices without needing excessive approval and validation from others. Now, I'm not talking about not consulting with friends or experts on important matters, but just in general. How often do you need to consult with someone or ask someone's opinion before you are able to feel good about it? And can you make some choices completely on your own? It's actually hard to give good advice. For someone to be able to give good advice, we need a lot of time to explain the whole situation. They need to have the time to understand everything about that situation. 
So rather than trying to get approval and validation from people who probably don't know you that well or don't have the time to understand the whole situation, consult with just a few friends on important matters and practice making smaller decisions completely on your own and then feeling good about it and feeling confident about your decision. Like, does this outfit look okay? Is this the right or for me, the right meal to order in this restaurant? Can I stay in tonight and just take a rest? These are decisions you can practice making completely on your own without approval or validation from someone else and then feeling very good about it. Exercise number four, regularly work on yourself. This gives you the good feeling that you're living up to your potential. Getting better at something boosts our self-confidence and increases our satisfaction. You can either learn something new or practice something you're already good at. You can read books on self-development that are relevant to you. You can listen to podcasts, subscribe to this channel because it's all about personal growth. Get regular input, reflect on it, and practice it. And don't practice too many things at once because the best way to grow is by taking baby steps. And exercise number five, become more aware of your strengths. Now, this is an act of balance, like many things in life. A certain awareness of our flaws and room for improvement is helpful. It shows us where we can still go. But if we are overly focused on our weaknesses, it will unnecessarily decrease our self-confidence. So make sure that you're not only reflecting on your weaknesses and room for improval, but also on your strengths and achievements. Also, the ones that may seem small to you or less obvious, like being able to be kind and gentle to others, or loyal, or being able to be inspired by music and art. These are some examples for strengths that are often overlooked. So if you feel like you have less strengths than other people, become better at recognizing your strengths and looking for them, because we all have strengths. I hope there was something in this video that is inspiring to you in your practice of being self-confident. And remember, that is really all it takes practice. Even people who seem like they were born as a self-confident baby, they were raised in self-confident environments. At least that is a big part of it. So remember that is what it takes practice. And I hope that you will join me for the next video on this channel I upload every week. And also if you enjoy Facebook groups, we have our own group. It's called Becoming an Expert at Self-Leadership. The link is in the description box and you're very welcome to join us. Take good care of yourself and goodbye.